if you look throughout adult medicine, things are very much based on evidence. You know, there's a lot, a lot more patients um, for many diseases. And so you have a lot more opportunity to test things and, and grade them as to, uh, you know, do we have randomized placebo-controlled trials? If, you know, if that's successful, then, you know, then this drug gets approved. I think the idea was that um, even if we don't have evidence, there's still plenty of patients who need help. And we need to have some guidelines that, um, you know, will help people to do the right thing. People sometimes think that a guideline is uh, a mandate, uh, but it's really not. It's just saying, you know, a group of um, interested experts got together, looked at all the information they could, made some recommendations, and that's just to help the uh, clinician um, to know what, what should I be thinking, what should I be doing, what kind of test should I do, when should I uh, be on more aggressive therapy, what kind of patient would be okay to just be on a, a pill, which ones need more aggressive IV or sub-Q or whatever. And that's really the goal of the guidelines. It's not, a, um, it's not a mandate to say you have to do things this way, but there was such a gap, such a huge need um, just for some basic information, you know, in terms of um, what, what kind of tests should you do? What order should you do them in? Uh, once you get that information, what kind of medicines should you use? What do we know about those medicines in children? And then also to define these, these further gaps so that we can you know, fill them in.